Okay, so I have two EPS files for two different spot illustrations, the unicorn and the fork and bull, right? These are the clean vector EPS files where I zoom in on them even in preview and you never see pixels. You just see clean cutout shapes versus the raster file that produced them. Look at all those pixels, oh, those terrible edges, right? So how do I set it up to color it? Because instead of coloring it in Illustrator, we're gonna color within Photoshop. We're gonna do what's called digital coloring, which is a, kind of the first step to digital painting, but we're gonna use vector line art. So just like we did with our logos, we are going to open a new file in Photoshop that is the size we want. And because this is a spot illustration, not a logo, we want a larger size. Because these are gonna be possibly the, the focal point of a poster. So instead of just eight by 10 by 350, I'm gonna do um, like 12 by 14 inches, something like that, at least 12 inches square, like a, an old school LP album cover. So I'm gonna do width of 12 inches, height of 14, maybe 16. Resolution, our lab standard, 350. Color mode should be RGB. Background should be white. These are all the standards. Create, right? Now I'm going to drag and drop my EPS onto it. And then, just like I did with my logo, I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit so that if I were to print it, I, I would think it looks good, right? Okay, now when I zoom in, look at the difference. It automatically rasterizes it to that size. But because it's a smart layer, right? If I try to paint on it, it tells me it's a, a smart object, right? Because it's a smart object layer, it won't, it's not rasterized and it will continue to re-rasterize no matter what size I use. That's the biggest benefit of having vector line work. Okay, now how do I set it up for coloring? Well, I already have the line art as a vector on top. So I'm gonna color that with gray, just that layer so I know. Then I'm going to lock it. Even though it's a smart object, I wanna make sure I don't accidentally rasterize it. Then on top of the white background, I'm gonna make a new blank layer and I'm going to call this flat local color. And what flat local color is, is if, it, if this was like a Charlie Brown Sunday comic, it would just be the most basic coloring possible. Okay, that's the first setup. Now to show you what flat local color might look like, I'm gonna go and click on my locked layer my vector layer and use the magic wand with contiguous turned on with a tolerance of 32. And I'm going to click on a shape I know is contained. So that could be the F, you see how it highlights within the F, or it can be this whole shape. And I might add with shift the undercuts within the O and the R, right? And then I'm going to fill this with a flat local color. So basically, what color do I want this to be? So I can't fill it on the vector layer, but I can select from the vector layer and then move that selection down to my flat local color layer. And I'm going to fill it. I'm gonna use only web colors right now. And I'm going to fill it with probably a yellow ochre kind of color. Trying to choose maybe this. Okay, and then I'm gonna say edit, fill. Or I can just use something we haven't used before, which is the paint bucket tool, and just drop it in. So now, what does that look like? I can hit Command D to deselect. And now I have flat color. flat local color behind. So you'll notice the horns were self-contained, the eyes were self-contained, the fork is self-contained, the chin and teeth and lips are self-contained, but the rest were open edge shapes, right? 
So how can I color in the bull's head with a local flat color? This is called flatting, F-L-A-T-T-I-N-G. And the way I can do that is with the lasso tool, I can pretty much trace around. It's pretty easy when it's underneath your black line work. And define this bull's head. Takes a little bit of patience. Some people like to do it with the pen tool and then convert it to a selection. I just like to do it by hand. I'm going to get the ear in there. And so if your magic wand can't select it all, remember you can always modify your selection. So I'm going to add to it that little blip in there. And now I'm going to fill this with a different color, but I'm going to add to it the chin, or not the chin, the neck here. And I'm working underneath my line work. Okay, then I'm going to deselect the white from it. So I go back to my vector and I use the magic wand and I hold down option to, to subtract the these shapes, right? Because I want these to be separate and they already are. And the eye. And the horn. So basically, I'm finding the shapes and even the black lines if I want to. I can subtract those from it. Okay, now I'm going to go to the flat local color layer, same layer that I have the yellow on or the orange, the ochre and I'm gonna fill it with a different color. So what color do I want the bull? Well, maybe a kind of reddish brown. Then I say, edit fill, or I can use my paint bucket. Okay. And then if I think, oh no, that color is too much, I can go to adjustments and hue saturation, and this can be a fun way to play with your color and I can push and pull it so I can actually see it in context with the other colors. I can saturate it more. That's kind of fun with the compliments. And I'm just trying to find pretty distinct colors right now. I actually don't have ideas for the colors yet, right? And this is called flatting. And without the line work, you can see how, how those colors work, right? Okay, now for the fork, I, I know I want it to look like it's silver, right? So I'm going to go to my vector, and I'm going to select the fork. First, the top side of it, which kind of spins. And then I'm going to pick a gray. It's fairly light. Then use the paint bucket and drop it in. And then I might use the gradient tool, but I'll do that later, right? To make it look um, reflective. Just to show you an example, something like that, right? But right now we're not doing gradients, we're not doing light and shadow. We're just doing flat colors, because that's how you start. Okay, next I'm gonna find all these grays. And they're all self, whoops, they're all self-contained. So I go to my vector layer, hold down shift, add in all these little spots. Whoops. Whoops, <laughs> back in my history, 
There we go. Want to make sure you select well. Good Photoshop is good selecting. Okay, now I'm going to pick a different gray, a darker gray. And use the paint bucket for that. But it has to be on the right layer. Can't be on my smart layer that's locked. And then if I decide before I deselect that I want a little bit more color, I can shift away from web colors. And I can give it a little bit more. A little bit like a tinge of red. But the important thing is that each flat color looks really distinct. So it's easy to um, select them later. And you want to use different colors for everything. So now just like a simple example, inside the eye, I might want to pick a really bold red. Then use the paint bucket and drop it in. And then maybe for the outside of the eye, I'll pick a yellow. It's different than the yellow I've used before. This is just flatting. So they're all different. A pale yellow. Drop that in. And then for the muzzle, I have a lot of contained shapes. I don't need to use do a whole lot of work with the um, with the lasso. I'll have to do that for these letters. But other than that, I'm good. Oh, I forgot to put that color into that. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. Now for the muzzle here, let's see, maybe a, uh, what would be fun? Maybe a, a light purple or a pink. Let's try it. It can always be changed. And then for the inside of the mouth, something pretty dark, but I'm going to go for dark blue. that down a little bit, drop it in. Nope, I want it deeper. So now look how easy it is to change colors. So if I want to change it to this color, I just use the paint dropper and click right on that flat color to change it. Okay, if I want to make sure I get the inside of the letters, go back to my vector, Select, hold down shift, select the inside of the B. Um, go to flat local color layer, hold down option to change my tool to the eyedropper, and that selects a color I've already used, and then just use the paint bucket to drop it in. So this is how you set up for, for digital coloring behind your vector. Your vector is on top as a smart object. You have it locked and kept as a smart object and labeled gray. Underneath it, you have floating flat color. That's just solid color choices behind the line work. And then behind that, you have your, your white piece of paper, your canvas. Okay, I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna set up the next one. So this is Carl, assignment, seven spot illustration and this is the bull as a psd to the desktop because it's got my vector already in it as a smart layer now i'm going to set up again a new file same size as the one i just did 12 by 16 by 350 create 